All right, family, we are now live. Let me get myself situated. Um, we about to get to, uh, oh yeah, well, I'm about to bring on my guest. You know, this is God Power Month. We're going to have another dynamic conversation tonight. Absolutely amazing conversation. I want y'all to get comfortable. As Brother Rich gets himself together, we're going to get to a commercial and we'll be right back, family. Make sure you hit that like button. Tell your friends and family. Brother Rich is now live and uh, be right back in one minute, family. One minute. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I got you. Okay, all right. Without further ado, family, I want to welcome back to the platform my brother Billy Carson. Welcome back, brother. Hey, thank you, man. Glad to be back. Glad to be back. Hey, man, Egypt, you was out there oh. for tell, tell, Talk about it, man. What, hap what, what happened out there, brother? Amazing, amazing tour. You know, every year we do an Egypt tour. Uh, last year we had 70 people. This year, we had 80 people just on the first tour. We did two tours back to back this year. The first tour was 80 people from all around the world. Took them on a super forbidden VIP tour of Egypt. Dope. Uh, we got the entire Nile cruise ship to ourselves. Uh, we rented out a third of the hotels that we stayed at, you know, um, and we took them on a super VIP tour. You know, morning sunrises at the Sphinx, sitting in front of the paws of the Sphinx. Yeah. doing meditations inside the, the king's chamber of the Great Pyramid, going into hidden chambers and secret compartments and going into shafts that go deep beneath the pyramid, uh, going out to the Temple of Dendera, uh, all the way out there and, and going to crypts, underground crypts and hidden crypts within the walls that most people can't get into, you know, looking at the, the very first, uh, you know, Zodiac, you know, the horoscope by Horus out of Kemet. Uh, taking them out to uh, all the way out to Abydos to see the Temple of Seti, where you see the the helicopter, the tank, and the and the and the airplane and, and the uh, what looks like a spaceship inside the hieroglyphs. Uh, it's not in just one place, by the way. People who try to debunk that, it's in five places inside of one temple. Then I took them down to the Osirian in the back, which nobody gets a chance to go into. Mm. Took them all over, man, all up and down to Luxor, Karnak, Kamambo. You name it, man. We went to Elephantine Island where the Ark of the Covenant is hidden. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's still hidden there to this very day. I took them in the original room where it used to sit and look, let them touch the podium that the Ark sat on top of. Ooh. It was a great trip, man. Then we took another, a sec, as soon as they went home, we got another group out. Right. And took another group of people out and did it all over again. <laughs> right, wow. Yeah, so I've been out there since the beginning of October. We just got back. Wow, that, that yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that sounds amazing. I know you're gonna have even more people on the next tour, man. That sounds oh, yeah. amazing, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so, Billy, all right, well, first of all, family, we're gearing up, we're getting ready for Blueprint for God Power 2, as you can see behind me, um, featuring Billy Carson and Dr. B. Serious. Um, uh, quick announcement because this is a big announcement, a lot of people were having issues purchasing tickets. Um, because of something going on with Eventbrite, there's something going on with Eventbrite. They got some type of beef with Apple, and if you're using uh Apple uh, uh, iPhone, you probably won't be able to purchase a ticket. So we just had to make an alternative link for those of you who are having problems getting a ticket. So I'm gonna post that link today for anybody who's having issues. Uh, anybody who's having issues 
purchasing a ticket. I'm gonna send out an email. I'm gonna try to let everybody know. And I, I don't got tons of email, hundreds of emails from people who couldn't purchase a ticket. Yeah. So yeah, we got a, we got a solution. That's what, what's most important. But I just wanted to let y'all know that. Yeah, I know it's crazy, right? It's crazy, man. It's, we, we, it's crazy. we just found out yesterday, me and Billy. Yeah, it took us hours to get through to Eventbrite to get to a human being to finally tell us, which I sent you a screenshot of the conversation, right, Rich? Yeah, yeah. That, uh, you know, Apple wants 30% of the ticket sales. Who are they, the mafia, man? <laughs> the mafia. So, so the Eventbrite mafia. was like, no, we're not giving 30%. This is all Eventbrite ticket, you know, uh, you know, promoters, not just us. Yeah. And so there's this thing going on between them and Apple where Apple's blocking their order form from taking purchases because they're trying to strong arm them into paying this 30% big to the mafia, to the Apple mafia. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, so. Um, no, it won't be a problem watching on the Apple products. It's just um, a lot of people had a problem buying a ticket. Just buying the ticket only. Yeah, not yeah. Watch. You can watch it on any device because it's on my TV network, but just buying the ticket has been an issue for uh, a percentage of Apple users for whatever reason they... Apple's like trying to be slick, like, oh, we just won't let them buy the tickets. That way you still got to come back to us and beg us to take 30 percent. You know, <laughs> it's yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. Apple realizes the majority of the world are using their phones. So, you know, they're basically, like you said, they're bullying people because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, just wanted to let you know that that link. Well, anyhow, the link is pinned at the top of the chat, family. So for any of you who's having issues, you could click on that link at the top of the chat. Um, to start with the show, Billy, um, you were in ancient Kemet. Yeah. So times we pray, we say things like, um, the Christians, I remember when I, <laughs> when I was young, Billy, my mother taught me to pray and say, um, God in the name of Jesus. So I had mm -hmm. to pray and I said, God in the name of Jesus. And as you know, at the end of the prayer, you say, amen. Yeah. Um, what did the ancients say in the beginning and the end of their prayer? Did they use a certain name, a certain God? What was their version of prayer to a certain God once you studied the text? Well, I'm going to give you a prayer right now. That's a good question you asked. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's a famous prayer that is spoken by and prayed by all Christians, most Christians at least, right? Our Father who art in heaven, how would be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, and we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, deliver, you know, deliver us from evil, blah, 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 blah. Thine is the kingdom, yeah. the power of glory forever. Amen. Yeah. So now that prayer the is uh, written by Ptah. That's Ptah. From Kemet. Ptah. Wow. P-T-A-H. Ptah wrote that prayer. That's the prayer of Ptah. Now, who is Ptah in the ancient text? That's Enki from the tablets. <laughs> right, right, right. So the prayer is Ptah's prayer, which uh, was translated into Latin and then from Latin translated into the King's English, which made it into the modern day biblical text. It's actually mm -hmm. an ancient comedic prayer. And the Amen is giving thanks to uh, his son, Marduk. He had two mm -hmm. sons. One was Thoth and the other one was Marduk. Uh, some people say Marduk, depending on how you want to pronounce it. He's listed, you know, that name is in the Jewish Torah. Right. And it's also in the biblical text in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. But he was Amin Ra. He wanted people to give thanks to him. And so when you give thanks, you're giving thanks to Marduk. You're not giving thanks to the creator of the universe. Mm -hmm. uh, so, <laughs> so it's pretty interesting. So they unfortunately were kind of tricked or fooled. The people were kind of fooled into this prayer system that was really praising these Atlantean Anunnaki people that were masquerading as gods, not the true creator of the universe, which I believe there is a creator of the universe because mm -hmm. the mathematics proves it. Mm -hmm. And so, but they would pray. That's one of the actual prayers from ancient Kemet. The prayer I just gave you, that Lord's prayer is a comedic prayer. Mm -hmm. mm. Amazing. I know a lot of people didn't know that. A lot of our yeah. father, I grew up with that. Um, I went to Catholic school and they taught us that in Catholic school and I had to recite mm -hmm. that every day. So I'm very familiar with that prayer. Uh, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this show tonight with you, Billy, and talk about uh, prayer, I feel as though when a lot of us um, left religion, uh, we also stopped praying. And that's like throwing a baby out with the bathwater. And um, I think it's important 
for us to have that connection with uh right. divine source, whether we call it God, whatever name we may have for it. And I feel as though getting back into prayer and praying the right way will mm -hmm. give us things that we've been waiting for a long time. And I think that's important to stress praying the right way. One thing yeah. I want to ask you, Billy, is one thing. Um, a lot of people seeing the seven sacred prayers, that's part of the package for the blueprint for God power Two workshop. Um, you have an enormous amount of feeling and emotion when you pray now yeah. neville Goddard said feeling is the secret in prayer that's the secret mm -hmm. to getting what you want now yeah. how what how are you able because a lot of people i think that's a problem for a lot of people being able to generate emotion mm -hmm. at will just from praying that's a gift right. to have that's truly is a gift how are you able to generate so much uh, emotion and feeling and how is it are you able to teach that to somebody or they just have to be born with that you think well, it's just getting people into a, a, a state of understanding what's within them and that what they're doing is they're talking to themselves. And so they can be they can feel free and open to say whatever they need to say, because when you're praying, you're talking to yourself because the same spark that created everything in the universe is in every atom inside of your body. Uh -huh. So you are God and God is you. And so what happens is sometimes people get a disconnect between the prayer because they feel like they're praying to something on the outside. Right, and in right. actuality, what you're doing is you're praying to the inside. You have to go to inner space. You have to dig deep and go to inner space. So it's nothing different than talking to yourself while you're looking in the mirror, right? You can openly speak to yourself. If, if you imagine that you're in an empty room and there's nobody else around listening to you and you're speaking to yourself, you can open up your heart and reveal your heart's deepest secrets, your, your deepest wishes, right? Your deepest thoughts. You can speak them out loud with no problem whatsoever. If you can make the connection and understand that when you're doing that, you're speaking directly to the divine because the divine spark is inside of you and you're directly connected energetically. There's no need for a middleman. There's no need for a bishop, a pastor, uh, a priest or anything like that, right? A rabbi. You don't need them. They're middlemen. They're getting in the way of your direct connection. They're interfering with the frequency. What you need to understand is how to go inside and be real with yourself. Be truthful to yourself and reveal, open your heart and reveal your heart to yourself. Right. And that's going to give you the inspiration you need to put forth the right words and the right emotion. And then understanding and believing in the end before the end, believing it is finished before it's finished. That's the key power to the power of how to pray the right way. Mm, definitely. Um, I think somebody in the comments says something that's interesting. And I think this is, uh, I'm going to add on to this. Uh, Barbara says, Billy looks so unemotional sometimes. His little laugh a little while ago was surprising to me. Now, I think what's interesting about you and me watching you generate so much success is that you don't give a lot of emotion to the external world, but you give a lot of emotion to your internal world. And for most people, it's the opposite. They give a lot of emotion to the external world and so little emotion to the internal world. So you actually do the opposite of what most people do. Like when yeah. you talk about your work or when you pray or whatever, you get very, you can feel the emotion, but on a, yeah. on a, on an average basis, you're, you're very, you're, you're very calm. So, yeah. uh, yeah, that, that's, that's an interesting observation, man. Very interesting. Right. Man. Very. <laughs> I try to control my energy a lot, you know, Yeah, I know. I yeah. Control my energy. yeah. Uh, to be honest with you in the, in the last, I would say two and a half years, I've become a little bit more free, a little bit more open, oh. a little bit more revealing of some of my internal emotion because I'm, I'm, I'm really extremely happy right now. Like I'm, I'm at my hap my happiest point in life. I'm at the most, patient level in my life right now than I've ever been. I'm experiencing the greatest part of my life. It's like I'm in my, I'm just experiencing like my first sunrise, you know, I'm in a, 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 a certain level of peace that's existing within me. I'm very happy with my relationship and my family. And so I'm at a very happy point. So a lot of people have been saying, I saw you smiling this photo. I'm seeing you look over, I'm seeing you smiling and laughing over here, you know, so yeah, I mean, in the beginning, I was kind of really very stoic and very, you know, stiff. And I still can get that way at times just because a couple of things. The first thing is uh, a lot of the information that I, that I talk about and you talk about as well, Rich, is so um, on, in a gray area sometimes and so out there that I want people to take me serious. You know what I'm saying? 
I want people to think, well, when this guy is speaking, he's dead. It's like he is not playing games. He's dead serious. I didn't want them to take things lightly. That's one reason. Mm-hmm. Another reason is, you know, just like everybody else uh, you know, in this entire world, everybody on this live right now, you know, I've had a lot of trauma in my life in the past. And one way to suppress the, uh, the emotions from that trauma, which gives me this, sometimes it gives me rashes on my body, like a- eczema break outbreaks. And so I I noticed that when I get too emotional, the eczema comes back. So I try to, you know, hinder and hold back some of the uh, some of the emotion and keep a very calm, cool, even keel about myself. You know, Mm. I can get I can get crazy every now and then, but I don't go too far out. You know, I reel myself back in. But between those two reasons there, you know, is, is, uh, you know, the main reason why people see me like it's so serious all the time. The information is real serious information. And I want people to take it as serious. And also like that, but that eczema problem that I've had, that's now even been repaired and fixed. I don't even have that anymore, right? Due to some alchemical stuff I've been dealing with, with Elizabeth, she got me on this stuff, man. It got me all the way straightened out. So I'm actually at my happiest point right now. I'm at my first sunrise right now. Yeah. I I noticed you loosen up a lot when you got with Elizabeth. You loosen up a lot when you got, (laughs) I noticed that immediately. (laughs) Immediately, that's the She's, pop- she brings me good balance, man. You know, she yeah. brings me good balance, man. She's a good woman. She's a hard worker. She cares about me. She cares for me. Yeah. You know, she she's always focusing on me becoming my optimal self, physically, mentally, spiritually. You know, emotionally. Indeed. Uh, and that's what you need in your life, man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let me yeah. ask you this, Billy. Do you you know you have your sheer fear of? I wouldn't call it internet drama, but. Anybody who's famous, anybody who has a following, there's going to be people talking shit about them to clout yeah. chase. That's how, you know, that's how you get on. You find somebody who has a bright light and you try to, you know, you're like a yeah. parasite. You try to get some right. of that light, get some of that shine. So you, they, they'll they use your name in a video to get views. And if they don't use your name, they don't get no views. What I yeah. want to ask you, knowing what you know with this information, do you pray for your enemies? Do you pray for people like that? How do you feel about the idea of, or is that a, a, a trick? that we was taught as a people to pray mm-hmm. for our enemies. What's your thoughts on that? That's a good question. You know, I don't pray for for my enemies in a way that people may think like the old school, like, you know, I actually meditate about them. Um, I meditate on them because there's a few people out there, man. These people don't even understand. Like if they had a way to get a hold of me and they were in a pretty rough situation, even after everything that they did, if I had the capability to help them, yeah. I would probably do it. Wow. That's, that's the kind of person I am. Wow. So I meditate on like focusing on how can I reach this person energetically and get them to see how can the universe bring something into their life to wake them up and get them to see that what they're doing is actually wrong and going against the grain and not going with the flow of natural life and going with the flow of the universe. They're going mm-hmm. against it. And that's going to create so much havoc and unhappiness and hurt in their life. The karma is going to be so ridiculous for these people, not only in this lifetime, but even in other lifetimes, I believe. And so I meditate on, you know, how can I make an energetic a thought connection? You know, right. I just sit yeah. there and do thought experiments. And 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 also I talk to them and say, hey, bring something to them, man, that will get them to see life in a different way. Get them to see that there's another way they can do things. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be this way. Um, you know, and so that's just what I do. And I really, you know. I don't have any real art or ill feelings. I've saved a couple of these people's lives already. Like I've literally saved their lives Mm. and I'm not, I'm not joking. You know, I grew up in Miami, man, you know, and those same people that I grew up with that are hitters are still my friends today. Right. So when they see stuff like this, these guys, they're still active (laughs) Mm -hmm. and they're like, I'm going to get them. I'm like, no, I had to reel one guy all the way back in. I said, dude, just don't do that. I said, for me, man, just, don't mm-hmm. do this. Just relax. Sit mm-hmm. back, relax. You know, just let this guy do his thing. I'll, we'll deal with attorneys or whatever else. But we, you, you can't, you can't do this because it's going to hurt me. It's going to destroy me, and it's going to destroy you. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so these guys are understand. Well, what happens to the people that don't check in with me and let me know they're going to go do something first? You see, right, right? So two people have already stopped action against them, and they don't even know. I literally, and this is not even a joke, Rich. Like. I literally saved their lives. They have no idea. Um, and so, but people who are doing these things, they think that this screen is a bulletproof vest and that it's untou- they're untouchable because they're typing information and putting videos up through screens. Well, they don't realize this is a very small world right now and all the information is available to everybody and people can reach out and will reach out and touch you. 
So it becomes a dangerous game that they're playing. And if you Google, uh, you know, YouTubers getting attacked and things like that and trolls getting attacked, you start to see like there's thousands of them in there where people are rolling up and pulling up on people now. This this screen isn't protecting people anymore. This, this uh, you know, cyber pride that you got where you can type anything you want on the screen and think you're untouchable, that's fading away now. So, but yeah, you know, I've saved people's lives literally by just saying, hey, don't do this. You know what I'm saying? Don't do this. And But when you have, I'm, I have a lot of fans. You have a lot of fans, Rich. Some fans, they may not want to contact you if they can go after one of your trolls. They may just do it on the house yeah has nothing to do with you you see so people got to realize when you have you're dealing with people of influence like yourself and me there's super fans out there we got like super fans that will go to work and so but they don't think about these things they think everything is play play like a video game you know Mm -hmm. but i tell you man you get these these trolls got to be careful because the wrong one they're going to mess with the wrong celebrity who has a super fan that's going to do something and it's just it's just bound to happen Indeed, indeed. All right. Let me ask you this, Billy. So with the information that you know you've acquired, um, you know, you've done countless research, traveled. Have you ever tried, Billy, to lay hands over somebody and pray? Have you ever tried that? I haven't laid hands on somebody and prayed. Um, You know, that technique can work because there's a famous video that Greg Braden has out for many years. You've probably seen seen it. I've seen it, yeah. Right. Where they have now, let me explain the difference between that. Mm-hmm. These doctors are laying hands on a woman in a hospital that doesn't have any medical tools. Mm-hmm. There's no scalpel, there's no x-ray machine, right? They have a they have a a, a scanner on the woman's stomach showing a, a gallbladder, a cancer, a gallbladder cancer about the size of a tennis ball, and they're putting hands on her and they're saying wuksha, wuksha, wuksha yeah. over and over again until the gallbladder cancer ball disappears live on camera. And what created that? How did that cancer disappear live like that in 15 minutes of saying wuksha well wuksha is the prayer that prayer says it is done that is the prayer there is no extra words there's no other asking and begging and pleading and wishing and hoping the prayer is it is done that's what wuksha means in chinese so you know laying hands on people i haven't done that but i will command health over someone's life i will command success I will command, um, you know, that they recover from a situation. Mm-hmm. I just command it. And then if the person is, is, you know, on the same frequency as me, I will speak with them and have them repeat after me and command it and get them to get louder and louder and louder until they can feel the energy where mm-hmm. they're commanding this change over the, over the, over themselves, their family or their lives. Indeed. Once again, family, we're prepping, getting ready for Blueprint for God Power Part 2. Shout out to everybody who has already signed up. I'm going to post a link in the chat again, family. This is going to be the workshop, the best workshop Brother Rich has ever put together. We have so much bonus content. I just talked to Rod Hayes yesterday. He's um going to be on one of my, um, my meditation songs. We have a meditation album, nine songs, three by me, three by Dr. B Serious, three by um billy carson one of my songs yeah. is fe- featuring rod hayes and it's called um message to big mama is dealing nice. with the d- divine feminine energy of the universe so shout to that brother i'm a, well, he's going to send it over to me probably by tomorrow and i'm gonna start working on it on thursday and i'm gonna start working on it but the meditation album we got the seven sacred prayers uh three people are going to get flown out to meet us uh, we got the like nine hour, 10 hour workshop. I mean, an amazing package we're offering for the family to yeah. um find, to, to learn about who they are and to tap into their full God potential. And I'm just so excited. I can't wait to Sunday. I'm going to be like a kid in the candy store listening to Billy and Dr. B talk. Uh, Billy mentioned last, you mentioned last time and people got real excited. The, um, the dream, the, the guided dream, uh, uh, thing that you're doing. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, t- t- talk a little bit about that, because that, that's awesome mm-hmm. that you, you mentioned yeah. that last time. You know, a lot of people have nightmares or they have unorganized dreams or they have strange dreams and they can't remember what it was, what it was all about or yeah. they can't seem to figure out what the mystery is behind the dream or they can only remember certain parts of it. And some of them are so ambiguous and strange, they can't figure out anything about it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and that used to happen to me as well. Mm-hmm. So I started doing mind experiments or thought experiments, I call them, 
on guided dreams. And I'm going to walk everyone through a guided dream, how to put themselves into a guided dream. Right. It becomes you first you work, you walk yourself into a transcendental state. And then from there, you walk yourself right into your your guided dream. But you have to have a plan before you go into the dream. So I'm going to show you how to set that plan up. I'm going to show you how to set that plan up and write down the, 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 the key points that you want to see occur within the dream and how to activate that. And so it also goes along with the specific frequency that I'm going to tell you about that helps that to initiate. It initiates that power of you going into that guided meditation. And you can turn this frequency on at night and you can get yourself, you can walk yourself literally right into a guided Ooh. dream. And through these guided dreams, they have a lot of purposes. You can get information. You can go on a, a hero's journey. You can util utilize it for manifestation techniques and bring things from the virtual realm, right, from the ethereal realm back, back into this reality and manifest it in your real life. So I'm going to go into all of that through this workshop and teach that also. You know, Billy, a lot of us, um, when we pray or meditate, we pray or meditate in front of fire. Mm -hmm. And, you know, fire, when you think of fire, you think of words like ether. Now, they say when the ancestors pass, pass away, when our, when our folks pass away, um, they go into the ether. They go into this eternal ether. Do you think that it's easier for our ancestors because they 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 try to find ways to communicate with us in this realm and mm -hmm. they don't speak they can't speak to us the way that me and you are speaking now for the most yeah. part do you think that fire is a tool that they use to communicate with us and perhaps when we're looking at a fire that could be like our ancestor controlling that flame that we see in the fire and that's what make meditation over fire so effective well, you know, it's interesting you, you say that. It's just really interesting how a lot of people do use the flame. The flame mm -hmm. is incredible because the flame flickers, right? And it takes on a life of its own. It does, yeah. And it's almost as if this it's its a living being. It's a living yeah. entity. Mm -hmm. And uh, it exists in several states, right? It exists, it exists initially as, um, as fuel, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to have fuel for the fire. It mm -hmm. eats oxygen. It grows. It can replicate itself just like a human being. Mm -hmm. And it seems to even have the ability to communicate. It's almost hypnotizing. It can hypnotize you mm -hmm. and get you into a higher state of consciousness yeah. by just watching it. So you're talking about something that appears to be sentient, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then and eventually the burn off from it is carbon, but also a gas. So you're mm -hmm. talking about something that, that's existing in multiple states. Uh, and so that could be the reason why it was chosen to be one of the top things used in, in meditation or contacting the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. uh, but fire is definitely one of the key things used all around the world. Even in ancient, ancient cultures, mm -hmm. it was fire and still is to this very day. And so it's a key part in, uh, you know, in our communication with the with the other world, with higher dimensions and also through meditation as well. Indeed, indeed. Um, what would you say, Billy? Why? What, because you mentioned the Our Father earlier, the prayer. And how the Christians got that, or the Catholics, or wherever it comes from, they got that from Ptah and Ptah's Inky. Mm -hmm. Where did one pray? The Psalms are so effective in the Bible, Billy, extremely effective. People love reciting the Psalms. Yeah. What makes it so effective, and where did the Psalms come from? Well, when you look into the Psalms, you begin to see that it comes from a few different texts and some really great authors. So, uh, some of the Psalms are coming out of the um, uh, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, which is really the Egyptian Book of Going Forth by Day, mm -hmm. right? And then you're getting some from the Tibetan Book of the Dead, which is pretty interesting. A lot of people don't even know that book exists. <laughs> That's a great book. Um, and, and then you have some of the Apocrypha text that was left out of the Bible. And so they took some of the text from the Apocrypha and the things that they like, and they put it in there. And then you had somebody adding their special touch to it as well. So the Psalms are pretty powerful. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff in the Bible. I've never said that the, you know, that, that, that the, the biblical text was all horrible. There's a video of me talking about all the good things in the Bible. And there's a mm -hmm. lot of good things in there. If you can actually apply them to your life, you can actually get a good result. Mm -hmm. And so where, where the mix up comes is the average person does not have the level of discernment to figure out what's real and mm -hmm. what's fake what's good and what's evil. And the reason why is because they haven't had the time to do enough research or don't even have the energy or the capacity to do the level of research that I have to figure out what to 
what to uh, access and utilize and you know in their life and what to say now nah, this doesn't resonate put this on the side mm -hmm. and so there's all because there's a lot of remixing going on in there the majority of the old testament is the enumi elish and the seven tablets of creation mm -hmm. the epic of atra hasis the code of hammurabi the myth of adapa uh the uh the mahabharata the bhagavad gita the indian vedas also make up some of the uh some of the psalms too by the way um and then you have uh, the Epic of Gilgamesh. Um, and then you're getting into now some of the New Testament where you're getting into, oh, don't forget the Book of Enoch took pieces of it, a little bit of it, it's mixed in, but not all of it, only a tiny bit. Right. But then you have the uh, the New Testament, you're getting into the Emerald Tablets of Thoth is really primarily a lot of the teachings from the Emerald Tablets of uh, the, uh, the the New Testament. The New Testament is primarily a lot of teachings from the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. So it's pretty interesting that they've taken pieces from all these ancient text tablets, papyruses, cylinder scrolls, and so forth from all around the world to build up this book. And then a lot of the biblical text was not written in real time. This is where another another thing that a lot of Christians just don't understand. Mm -hmm. Nobody was following Jesus around and saying, oh, say that one more time, Jesus. I got to write this down again. I, I misspelled that word. Mm -hmm. Didn't happen. The Bible was written from 100 A.D., to 900 AD. Now, when did Jesus die? According to the biblical text, 2000 years ago. Yes. <laughs> so, so, okay. So, you know, you can, and guess what, when you write a book, uh, in that, in this current era, which is CE 100 AD is CE current era. That's after death. Mm -hmm. You can, you can fulfill any kind of prophecy you want because you're writing the story as you go. You can make prophecies. You can do whatever you want at this point, right? You can remix text, take mm -hmm. things in, put things out like the Council of Nicaea did. Mm -hmm. You can make a completely re remixed book out of uh, out of random thousands of pages and papyruses and scriptures and, and, and tablets and then say, this is the word of God. And they found a way to really uh, curate it in a way that really used applied neuroscience to put the boot on people's necks and get them to pay taxes and pay dues and tithes and bring offerings and food and everything else. And that's, that thing still has such a tight grip on people to this very day. Okay. Uh, uh, Billy, in, in ancient Kemet, did they pray with their hands like this, like we do? Or is, or is that a, a new invention that, that happened in America? Or, is, or is, this, is this an ancient, this and this? Is this some ancient stuff? Or is that sort of new? Yeah. All the hand things, this, this, you know, this, these are all mudras. Right? Right, right. When you see people doing this, Jay-Z and these people, people, mm -hmm. oh, he's Illuminati sign. No, no, no. It's not the Illuminati sign. This is an ancient mudra mm -hmm. for success and health and so forth. This is these are mudras. And people would pray with these mudras all the time. OK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and, you know, and these mudras, uh, you can look up mudras and you can actually Google them and you can see what all these ancient hand, uh, you know, positions are and what they mean. And how you can speak power over yourself and others utilizing those those exact hand uh, uh, signs. So they're not Illuminati symbols and signs like it's been passed around for decades. <laughs> oh, Illuminati. Look, he's putting up the Illuminati sign. Mm -hmm. Some clown made that up and then everybody ran with it. Yeah. Those are actual ancient mudras. So, yes, the answer to your question is yes, it's ancient. Do you use uh, different mudras when you pray for certain things or it's pretty much the same form when you pray for everything? I usually use this one, but my hands are kind of down. Okay. So my hands, like you see in, the, in my seven yeah. sacred prayers, my hands yeah. are down. My hands are around my waistline. Sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm focusing and harnessing energy. You know, mm -hmm. it's all about harnessing and focusing energy. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm never really in this position to get down like this on my knees or anything like that. I'm usually standing in a position of at least I have some kind of strength. I don't want to be down and out like i'm out on my knees and i'm going all the way down to the ground i think that that takes away your power i think that releases your power and gives it away to an outside entity what i want to be able to do is is ask the universe for help ask god for help and assistance but in a way that they know that i am i realize i'm still powerful as well right mm -hmm. that i'm connected and that it's me talking to my mirrored self from talking to my higher self Mm -hmm. And so I do it in a way where I'm still having a position of power, not that I'm giving away my power by going all the way down and bowing down and getting on my knees and wailing and crying like that. It's okay to cry and get emotional, 
but not to as if you're just in this begging state and you're just in this hopeless state. That's a low frequency. And so I try to put, keep myself in some level of a position of power. And typically I'm sitting straight up or I'm standing up, you know, when I'm actually praying. Indeed. Do you think um, in ancient times, do you, was there like when they prayed, was there, or when they just spoke their language in general, was there a past, present, and future tense, like English language? Like, I will go to the store. I am going to the store. Or, I went to the store. Was language ancient language constructed like that? Because they say the time is an illusion. So is this strictly in the English modern languages, or did ancient languages have past, present, and future also? They had past, present, and future where they spoke, but they spoke in the dialect of Yoda from Star Wars. Explain. So, like, like John, yeah, George Lucas, uh, he got his, he got the dialect for Yoda from yeah. these ancient tablets. Let me give okay. you an example, right? Let me please give you an example do, real do. quick. Yeah, please do. I'm going to a tablet here. This, this, right? this is good. This is good stuff, y'all. I hope y'all listening. <laughs> this is good stuff. Sign up for the workshop, y'all. All right. Okay, this is Thoth speaking now from ancient Kemet. Okay. First and most mighty sits the veiled presence. You see what I'm talking about? First and most mighty sits the veiled presence. This is a, this, you would hear Yoda say something in that format in the Star Wars movie series. Lord of Lords, the infinite nine, over the other from each the Lords of the cycles. You see how it's talking in reverse almost, but it's saying something going forward. Three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, each with its mission, each with its powers, guiding, directing the destiny of man, there sit they, there sit they, mm. mighty and potent, free of all time space. Mm -hmm. So you see, this is a, a reference here where I say Thoth was, went to the land of Kim, which later uh, he chose its capital to be Hermopolis, also known as Kemenmu. Kemenmu. So this is, a, a, you know, going into it in my book from the Emerald Tabis, but, but he is literally speaking in a way that a lot of people spoke back then. Right. which is kind of in reverse, but still going forward, but still giving you past, present, and future. Right. It's right. kind of, because of the way we speak now, it, it's, it takes a while to get used to reading like that, you know, and picking mm -hmm. up on the nuances of what's being said and trying to get the comprehension down. But after you do it for a while and you really pay attention to what you're reading, you begin to get the comprehension. You know, they say uh, George Lucas got the story Star Wars from ancient texts. So yes. let me ask you this: Who would Yoda would, would Yoda represent to Hootie, or if not, who would Yoda represent in the ancient text, Billy? The ancient text that he got it from is something called the Terra Papers, which means the Earth Papers. It's an mm -hmm. ancient text by the indigenous natives of the Americas, mm -hmm. uh, and that paper is called the Terra Papers. There are some PD you can buy it on Amazon, but there are some PDFs available online as well. It reads just like the Star Wars movie. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and what he did then was he also went into some of the animal tablets and some of the Sumerian tablets, and he mixed in a few nuances from there as well into the storyline. The only thing that's not really in these ancient texts are the love stories and some of the other stuff, right? But the fundamental basis of the story, even the empire and all the you know and all that is in there. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. The Jedi, it's all in there. Mm -hmm. um, and this fight for truth and justice and seeking the light, it's all in in the Terra papers. Even the life forms and how they formed on their planets and then began to, to seek their birthright to the stars and then began to communicate and cross star to star and, um, and eventually form these cliques, which then went against each other. It's all in the terror papers. Uh, mm -hmm. And so uh, he took it literally right out of the terror papers and turned it into, turned it into a multi trillion dollar business, which I can't. Hey, hats off to him, man. He did a great job. Indeed. So I see somebody, she was talking about uh, Thoth and how Thoth was talking in the Emerald Tablet. Somebody said, so like Shakespeare, what do you think about the writings of Shakespeare and how effective that form may be? Very good uh, comparison. Yeah, Excellent yeah. comparison. Very similar. Yeah. Indeed. Very similar. Like when you read, the, when you begin to read these words that he's written from his tablets, you can get, you get this cadence, just like a Shakespeare. You also get like a cadence to it. Mm -hmm. And you get these impactful statements in there as well that make you, you know, make these voice inflections. It's pretty powerful stuff. That's why I like to read this out loud. When I was reading these Emerald Tablets, you know, before I wrote the book, I was just going out, reading them to myself out loud, getting the frequency, hearing the cadence, you know, hearing the rhythm of the speech and the text. It's great comparison to Shakespeare. 
man, why don't you read us one more, Billy? That was that was good, man. Like, read, us, read us one more <laughs> of that, man. Some powerful this, stuff in here, bro. This, this, this is, you know, crazy. this is God power right here, family. Yeah. And I think it's powerful what you said about the cadence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Reminds me of music. Oh, it's music, man. You know, yeah. the both is all about frequencies. Yeah. Right? Yeah. In Emerald Tablet number two, so it says, deep in Earth's heart lie the halls of Amenti, far neath the island of the sunken Atlantis, halls of the dead and halls of the living, bathed in the fire of the infinite all. Far in a past time, lost in the space time, the children of light look down on the world, seeing the children of men in their bondage, bound by the force that came from beyond. Knew they that only by freedom from bondage could man ever rise from the earth to the sun? Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's this powerful stuff. So what he's saying is him and his people were looking down on mankind mm -hmm. and realized that we were suffering, that we were in a dark state, a dark mentality, mm -hmm. and it wasn't our fault. They're saying that we were in this state because of others that had come here and engaged us in a way that held us down and turned us and put us into this dark mindset that kind of stripped away our true birthright. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that, so we knew that basically if we don't help free them from bondage through consciousness, they'll never rise from the earth to the sun. They'll never become enlightened. Mm -hmm. You know, crazy, powerful stuff, man. Powerful mm -hmm. stuff. This, this, <laughs> this guy here. Mm -hmm. And so um, he continues on. So what I do is I, I wrote a compendium. So I break down the tablet as I go through it, you know, and then I, I add more from him. So he says here, Side by side, then, place they other spaces, fill them with life, with light from above. So he's talking about creating dimensions, the creators above him creating dimensions and filling each dimension with life. Build it, they, then, the halls of Amenti. Now, the halls of Amenti are these halls that they discovered right where Thoth said they were, underneath the Great Pyramid in Kemet. Also, there's another set of halls. They have a lot of them around the world. The other one is in Saqqara, which was his father's halls of Amenti. His name was also known in the tablets as Thought Me. And he mm -hmm. said, where his father sleeps yet lives eternally. And in, I took the people, these 130 people I took to Egypt just now, where I just came back from, mm -hmm. I took them to Enki's halls of Amenti, Ooh. where they had the rejuvenation chambers, Ooh. where the bodies would lay in there and rejuvenate over 100 years time. And he would transfer his mind from body to body to body and walk amongst men, but unlike a man, he would say. I wow. took him straight to the to the, uh, to the the underground place underneath Saqqara, underneath the Sahara Desert, and took them to the halls of Amenti. Wow. Yeah. They were blown away, man. Blown <laughs> away. Yo, yo blown Billy, away. so in the time of Earth, when the Anunnaki was down here and they, they had people as slaves down here and they were taking advantage of humans down here, were people affected by the law, what we call now the law of attraction, the way we are affected now? Were the people in that time, were thoughts creating a reality the same way that thoughts create our reality in this time, Billy? Oh, no doubt. Absolutely. That's a universal law mm -hmm. that just can't be broken. That law is a universal law. Unfortunately, um, when you're at operating from a certain level of ignorance, you can't see beyond the veil. Mm. So they weren't able to truthfully see too far beyond the veil. Mm -hmm. Some did, but most couldn't. And because of that, both would go around and try to bring enlightenment all around the entire planet. And this guy has been on every single continent on this planet. And he's taught and enlightened mankind everywhere. No matter where you look, you're going to find that he was there. Mm -hmm. He has many different names. In China, he was the first emperor, Wang Di, right? And, uh, and of course, in Kemet, he was uh, Thoth, Tahuti, Jehuti, Tahuti, mm -hmm. uh, throughout entire Africa. And you go up into um, uh, Europe, Europe, he's Mercury, Odin, Thor. You go into um, uh, Samaria, you know, ancient Samaria, which is now modern day Iraq, he was Nigazita. Nigazita. Right? So Nigazita. That was his oh, name, Nigazita. God damn, yeah. what a name, y'all. Nigazita. Whoa. <laughs> Shit. You go, you go over there, up back to this side of the planet. You know, you go down into the Mesoamerica area. You know, he was, of course, Teotihuacan, which is the city of Thoth. That means that's exactly what it means, city of Tehuti, which is in Mexico City, where they have the other three pyramids that match the ones in Africa perfectly. And then he's also known down through the Yucatan Peninsula as Kukulcan, Lorpakal, Veracocha, 
you know, Quetzalcoatl. Uh, you're talking about a person you, in Australia. I was in Australia. Thoth is carved into the sands, into the rock in Australia in this giant glyph. And they call him Thoth Mabi in Australia. Wow. Everywhere. I don't care where you go. You're going to find him. You know, you did a video. Um, something about Thoth and Jesus. Was Jesus another version of Thoth? Because I didn't get a chance to you see know, a video on that. I I made a I made a case that Jesus, aka real name Yeshua, mm -hmm. could possibly be Thoth the Atlantean priest king from Kemet, who found a way. Uh, by the way, I got to show you a shout out to T Solomon. Shout out to T Solomon Opalaka three hundred five, uh, who who found a way to possibly come back through a womb of a woman. Okay. These people were so creative and so high tech and they had so many capabilities with how they would move their mind around from body to body. It's possible. I was making a case in that video and just a hypothesis could both have found a way to come through the womb and regain all memories and grow up as a human being to get another experience. Right. Mm -hmm. You look at Jesus's grandmother, Mary's mother. She was also a virgin birth. Now, you're talking about two virgin births in one bloodline. And we're talking about artificial insemination. We're talking about in vitro artificial insemination. When you take a zygote, you, uh, you take an egg out of another, another uh, woman's womb, you, you add uh, genetic material to it, you insert it back into the womb and let it go to term. And you give birth to a baby without having sex. Mm -hmm. This happened in not ancient, ancient, but a couple thousand years ago. And so I'm wondering if they established that particular bloodline for a reason, the Merovingian bloodline, so that Thoth was experimenting on how he can come back through the womb to experience life as a what we call a human being, a homo sapien sapien, just to have another perspective on life. Because this guy says he's traveled, he's traveled from to planets. He said in the Emerald Tablets, he says, to many worlds have I traveled to witness many men on their worlds rising to the heights and plumbing to the depths. He's watched civilizations, he says, rise and fall. This is incredible stuff to be writing 36,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. Could he have maybe found a way to come through the womb of a homo sapien and see what it's like to experience life as us? Mm -hmm. It's possible. You know, it's very possible. There's a lot of similarities. Either way, if, he, if it's not, Yeshua definitely learned the Egyptian mysteries. And by the way, when I went to Kemet this month, I took all those people to the house where Yeshua actually lived in Egypt which is an actual shrine, the bed and everything, the crypt is there where he slept in. They converted it into a Coptic church now, but it's still there. Many people travel from all around the world. He was actually there, not only there, but a few other places throughout Egypt, but he went there to learn the Egyptian mysteries. Well-documented. Mm. Uh, let me just, uh, somebody in the chat says, hey, Billy, I already purchased Blooper for God Power. How do I watch it now since I cannot get it on my phone? We never said that. We no, never we said it. we never. It's so easy to take what we say yeah. and, and misinterpret it. We yeah. said people are having problems buying it on on Apple phones. If you already yeah. bought it, you're good to go. You're good we to go. Said if you are having an issue buying it, then you can use the new link that we got pinned at the top of the chat. There's yeah. not gonna if you if you got tickets, there's gonna be absolutely no issue at all with watching the event. No yeah. issue at all. But some people who have Apple products are having issues purchasing a ticket. So we have a new link for them to use if they cannot purchase a ticket. So just wanted to yeah. uh, clear that up. And uh, Pimp of the Nation 369, thank you for your purchase. Really do appreciate it. Pimp of the Nation 369. I want to, uh, we're not going to be on here too long tonight. So I want to take a couple of questions from the people. So give me a couple of good questions to ask Billy. In the meantime, let me just ask you, Billy, um, what advice would you give to people that, you know, a lot of us, this, hap this happened a lot to a lot of people. You pray, you pray, and you pray for something, Billy. You want something to manifest. You want something to happen. You get it. Then you find out it doesn't make you happy. Mm -hmm. And this happens to people over and over and over again. They pray for something. Then once they get it, and it's not that they're not being, I get, maybe they're not being unappreciative. They just didn't know they didn't want it, but they prayed for it. What advice would you have for people who are praying for things and they're getting things and it's still not making them happy, Billy? They're looking for love in the wrong place and love, they're not meaning a relationship love, but they're looking, and it could be that it could be a relationship, but they're looking for their love, right? Their happiness in something exterior. 
They're praying for things. Give me this. If I get this, I'm going to be happy. If I get this house, I'm going to be happy. If I get this car, I know it's going to make me happy. If I get this woman or this man, I know I'm going to be happy. If I get this jewelry, I know I'm going to be happy, right? And people keep, and then all of a sudden, it somehow manifests for them. And then they realize, man, this, I'm not happy. Well, what's happening is they're looking for that joy, for that love that they should be looking for inside themselves on the outside. There's nothing that exists in the entire universe outside of you that is going to make you happy. Let me say that again. Mm. There is nothing that exists throughout the entire universe outside of you that's going to make you happy. There's only one thing that was gonna, that's going to make you happy, and that's going to be you. You have to become happy with yourself. You have to go inside yourself and figure out who you are. You have to face up to your own past traumas and face them head on and deal with them and work them out. Feel them and work through them. Whether you need counseling, whether you need to do modalities or whatever you need to do, you have to address that trauma. You will never, ever, ever be happy until you're happy with yourself. You can never find a woman or a man that's going to make you happy. They may add on to your joy, but at your core, if you're not a happy person, then forget about it. It's not going to happen. Look at Jada Pinkett Smith. She's a perfect Ooh. example of this. Well, you took Look it there. Huh? You took it there. Perfect dead. example. Woo. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so you must be happy with yourself. I remember when I got out of a relationship that went awry. And I said to myself, I'm just going to take some time off to be with myself because I keep making the same mistake over and over. I keep getting into the same exact kind of situation. Mm. And I had to say, it's not them. It's me. It's Mm. me why I keep getting into relationships like this. It's my fault. Let me stop blaming other people. She did this and she and she did that. And she no, it's me doing this and doing that. Why? Because I'm putting myself in these situations. So I want to take some time to figure out more about myself, who I am, what I like. What I what makes me truthfully happy. So I began to go on my meditation walks, which I still go on to this very day. Right. That was 15 years ago when I started this. I still go on my meditation walks. I, I, I go and take myself on dates. Right. I started taking myself out on dates myself. Just me. Wait, myself. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Just yourself. Just me, myself. And oh, I, man. Man. OK. Good, That's good, right. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And I would post, look, what I like about social media, it saves all the receipts. I got posts of me giving, th- taking selfies says I took myself on a date. Wow. Go down my Facebook feed, <laughs> right? I'm at heat games, I'm at events, I'm at tennis, uh, tennis matches, whatever I could find that I thought was interesting, boat shows, whatever. I'm like, I'm taking myself on a date, right? Yeah. And so, and the reason why I made it public is so people can see like, you got to learn to hang out with yourself. Right, right. A lot of people, what happens is they can't spend any time with themselves, so they always yeah, latched yeah. on to somebody. Oh, I better latch on to this one. I better latch on to that one because they're going to give me, they're going to make me feel better. No, you got to spend some time alone. You got to go down in the dark hole with yourself and climb out with yourself and then get to a point where you're happy with yourself. And the biggest key to that, the biggest key to that is you must stop asking and begging for outside sources like deities to forgive you. That's the biggest mistake people make. Oh, Lord, forgive me for my sins. Oh, Lord, come and relieve, relinquish me from all this sin. No, that's dumb. What you must do is look in the mirror directly at yourself and think about whatever it is that has gone on in your past and say, I forgive myself and wholeheartedly feel that and say it over and over and over again. I forgive myself. 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 And get your your body and your cells to vibrate in that same frequency and wholeheartedly forgive yourself. Now, once you forgive yourself, the key is this, remembering what it was you're forgiving yourself for. And now putting a plan together and putting something in place to never allow yourself to fall into that position again, to never allow allow that to happen again, to never do that again. And also the third thing is to learn from those mistakes so you can grow and become consciously more aware. That's how you become born again. Being born again has nothing to do with getting doused and thrown into a pool or ocean and all this kind of foolishness, splashing water on babies and all that dumb stuff. Being born again is when you come to a level of consciousness that you can realize you've grown spiritually, you've grown consciously, and you can look back on your previous self and see where you came from. That's being born again. And you'll be born again many times in in the same lifetime if you're on the right path. 
Then now you can say, hey, this thing came, this woman or this man came into my life. Oh, I got this nice house that I was looking for. I got this car that I needed. Uh, It added on to my happiness. But at your core, you were already happy because you did the work on yourself. That's the secret. Mm. Yeah, Billy's definitely preaching tonight, y'all. He's definitely, (laughs) he's tapped in. He's tapped in. Uh, Could y'all imagine what it's going to be like on Blueprint for God Power Part 2? I mean, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Him and the brother, uh, Dr. B. Serious, y'all. Make sure y'all get these tickets. Trust me when I say this is going to be an absolutely mind-blowing workshop. I want to see all y'all there. Let me share the link again in the chat. I want to see all y'all there. Uh, This Sunday, starting at 10 a.m., Dr. B. Serious, Billy Carson. Uh, We got a lot of surprises for y'all. And a lot of bonus content. Uh, I sent this, the seven prayers out to y'all. If whoever did not get the prayers yet, because I just I sent them out before the show. Let me put my email in the chat. Whoever did not get them yet, email me. Email me at richardmerritt at yahoo.com. And I'm looking into it tonight. Whoever buys tickets tonight will get the seven sacred prayers tonight. So shout out to everybody who bought tickets during the show. Uh, you will get them tonight. Okay, family. Let me get back to, cause we're not going to be here too much longer. Let me get back to, uh, some questions. Let me get the super chat question. Could the freezing of the bloodline method be the origin of the name ISIS or could ISIS be the origin of the word ice based on freezing and fertilization of a bloodline? That's a good question. Actually, that's a pretty interesting concept. Yeah. Yeah. Add on to my existing theory. So, and I wouldn't really call it a theory now because I've now gone to several sages and wisdom keepers and temple uh, priests and gotten the same answer. So you're looking at Isis, right? And when you go into the ancient text, you have the Kemet text and you also then have the Sumerian text. And guess what? Isis is in both. We're talking about these people ruled for thousands of years over that region. And she was one of the goddesses. Isis got so frustrated with the cloning. And I took people, by the way, to Karnak and showed them the cloning hieroglyphs where the where they in back in the day, these Nituru, a.k.a. Nituru and Kemet means Anunnaki. They were making clones of people and they actually showed the full process in the glyphs. And I took them to the glyphs to see and their eyes were like, boo. Oh, my God, you were right this whole time. They're making clones. So they, but she was getting frustrated. The cloning process was not going that well because the clones couldn't reproduce on their own. So it's a lot of work to keep making these clones to do the labor and the work that they needed to get done on the planet. So she said, you know what? That's it. I'm done. I'm going to take the baby to term myself. And they took an egg out of an existing hominid, which would have been one of our cousins. And she put uh, some Anunnaki essence or just essence means DNA or genetics into it. Put it in her womb. We're talking about in vitro fertilization now. Put it in her womb. She took the baby to term according to the text for 10 months, not nine, and gave birth to the first Adama, which means first man. And she's holding it up like this. And at that time, at that moment, that began the records of the uh, of the of the book of Gen Isis. Right. Gen Isis, the generations of Isis, Gen Isis, Genesis. This is the first book of the Bible. It comes out of the name Isis. It's the generations of Isis because Adam was one of the very first to be born from the womb. After they tried to mate him with some of these other beings, guess what they found out? Couldn't make any babies. So then they took another sample of DNA and made another female using his same uh, uh, genetics, made it them success. Adam and Eve were not the first two people on earth. That's a farce. If you don't believe me, I want you to take an island and I want you to put two people on that island and I want you to tell them to keep having sex and have the babies keep having sex. And I want you to come back in 30 years and see if there's anybody alive. They'll all be dead because of birth defects, because you don't have enough genetic diversity. Mm -hmm. You must have genetic diversity. Two people did not create 8 billion people. And the people that preach this at these churches around the world nonstop they need to be removed, man. It just, it's a sin. It's a sin. They need to be arrested and put in prison. It's a sin wow. against humanity, putting this cockamamie idea in people's heads. Mm. That goes against basic genetics, right? You, we, this is why we don't have sex with our sisters and our brothers and our cousins and so forth, because we know it's going to create uh, mentally ill and also dis- people with disabilities. 
and eventually it's going to create death, stillbirths, and so forth and so on. So you need to have genetic diversity. So they reproduced the Adam experiment over and over again through wombs. They had the Hathors. They had the birthing houses of the Hathors, which I took the 130 people to the Temple of Dendera where they had the birthing houses, and they were doing this process of impregnating these women, and Hathor was, uh, you know, approving and, and, and consecrating these births and so forth, and they were having all these babies. And this is why in the Old Testament of the Bible, Cain kills Abel, then Cain is now fearing God. God comes back and says, hey, man, why'd you kill him? Man, what's going on here? I was jealous, blah, 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 because you favored him more than me. And he said, man, you got to get out of here. God says, this God, by the way, Yahweh is actually Enlil by the, from the Sumerian tablets. Mm -hmm. He says, you got to get out of here. So Cain says, well, if I go out there, the people out there might kill me. Well, what people? If there's only Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, there shouldn't be people out there. Right. The people out there are these people that these beings were already making to do labor and work, mm -hmm. become full-time slaves. Mm -hmm. So God says to him, and Lil, Yahweh, whatever you want to call him, he says, don't worry, I'm going to put a mark on you so they'll know you're my boy. They won't touch you and sends him out there. You, He says, you'll go out there and you'll find your wife. Mm -hmm. So again, adding more credence to the, to the, to the fact that you can't create um, 8 billion people, which is what we have right now on earth from two people. There were already many, many people out there already. But that's the story. The generations of ISIS is Genesis in the Bible. Indeed. Let's get to the, uh, this next question. Which crystals you think are best for connecting to the magnetite and dendrotite crystals in your brain since your pineal gland is a negatively charged calcite crystal? Uh, that's a good question. There's a, well, you know, smoky quartz and quartz crystal were two of the things that were used by the people in ancient Kemet. Mm -hmm. And they used a specific type of magnetized crystal granite all over the place to activate and communicate with the crystals in their minds. And so pretty much almost everywhere you go, they harvested this granite, this, this magnetized crystal granite from Aswan. And in Aswan, there's the quarry there, which I've been to. That quarry is so hot, man. <laughs> I remember in 2021, I was there and I was standing there. I had on a pair of uh, LeBron's, Jordan's, uh, not LeBron James uh, Nikes. Mm -hmm. And the soul started making a sizzling sound. And then it just went. And the soul and the insole and the outer soul fused together and became like a rock. Damn. That's how hot it is. It was wow. like 128 degrees where I was standing. Wow. But the I was standing on top of magnetized crystal granite, and you could feel the energy. And everywhere you go throughout Cam, all the places I take people are, are actually to the ancient sites, mm. it's all over the place. And you can feel and even see the energy through your video cameras. So um, there's reference, references from pharaohs talking to these gigantic crystal stones. And they would hear the voices in their head from these gods. And I believe that the gods is transmitting through the magnetized crystal granite directly into the crystal inside these people's heads, mm -hmm. making them thinking they were hearing the voice of God, but they were really hearing the voice of people that knew how to utilize this technology. Wow. Even, the, even the giant Stella, the dream Stella in between the Sphinx's paw, which I took people to actually go touch, which mm -hmm. nobody gets to do this, by the way. You mm -hmm. don't just go into the Sphinx enclosure. It's guarded by the military. Everyone has to watch it from 50 yards away or more, 100 yards away even in some in some areas, depending on the angle that you're in. Mm -hmm. I took people directly into the Sphinx enclosure. We even looked underneath the Sphinx. But but we, um, but that Dream Stella is a gigantic piece of, again, quartz crystal granite that's magnetized, and it does something. You can feel it. You can feel the energy coming out of it. And the Pharaoh used to say that he was getting uh, uh, information from the gods. He can hear them clearly. They were transmitting directly to his mind. Wow, that's deep, Billy. Wow. Yeah. Oh man. Um, yeah, shout out to everybody who sent um their information for the vendor, the vendor show, the online vendor show I'm supposed to do this Thursday. I'm gonna have to move that to next week. Uh just I got a, a overwhelming response, and I'm really getting ready for this workshop. So we're gonna do that next week. So shout out to Queen Peace. If you sent your information via email, I have it. But, um, yeah, I want to do that right with y'all and make sure I get everybody who's uh, got their stuff together. And also, one, a bit of advice for anybody, and not, not just dealing with me or dealing – if you're ever dealing with a business person and they tell you to email them uh, information about your products, 
don't send me an email and tell me to hit you up. I'm not going to hit you up. I'm not. You send me your info on the email. I'm going, people, business people are going through hundreds and thousands of emails. They don't have time to read your email, email you, then wait for your email. No, send me your link immediately. You got one chance to get it right, family. And this is just a bit of advice. It's not just with me. Send your link as soon as you send that email. Don't email the person and say, well, call me brother rich so I could tell you about what I got. It don't work like that in the business world. So anybody who are, is interested in having their products on the show, when I do this show, send me your link in the email. I'm not going to hit you back, tell you to send me your product. Then you send me, I'm not, I don't have time to talk to y'all like we're friends. I'm, I'm interested in looking at good products, getting some good products on the show, supporting you if you have good products and keeping it moving. So it's not just with me, it's just with anybody in the business world. You're not going to get three, four, five email responses. You got one time to get it right, family. Send your link and make sure everything looks good when you do send that link, family. But so far, everybody, most of y'all have been sending amazing products and y'all have had amazing links. A couple of people just tell, let, left me their phone number. I'm not calling y'all. Email me again, leave me that link, and um, you know, we'll do we'll do it from there. So let's continue with the show. We're about to wrap it up, but um I got something I want to wrap with uh, yeah, if yeah. possible. I want to yeah. give them some some ancient words from the land of Kemi, which is why yeah. this workshop is so important. Beautiful. Thoth says this: he says, wise words, although written by my decaying hand, remain imperishable through time, imbued with the medicine of immortality by the all master. He says, be unseen and undiscovered by all those who will come and go, wandering the wastelands of life. He says, be hidden until an older heaven births human beings who are worthy of your wisdom. And so what he's talking about, the human beings that he's talking about is us. What he's saying here is, he says, the information, the knowledge and the wisdom that he has imparted wasn't written for the people of the current era and the time that, they, that he was in at that particular time he wrote this. It was for future people. It was mm. for the time that heaven births human beings who are worthy of the wisdom. We're talking about the people who are born now. We are the ones that are worthy of the wisdom. We are the ones who have the capability of understanding and discerning this level of knowledge that we're about to teach at this Blueprint for God Power Part 2. We are the ones that have are, are going to receive the birthright of this information and this knowledge because we are finally at a place in time that we can actually understand it, discern it, and actually put actionable steps behind it. We have the full vocabulary, the understanding. We have the mathematics. We have a higher level of consciousness. We haven't reached the highest level, but we have enough now to get the, to get the, the ball rolling. And so we're the ones that are now um, gifted to get this kind of wisdom and this kind of knowledge. In this time, in this age, we are the ones born under the new heaven. And so this was written 38,000 years ago. But it was written for us today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, another quick question, Billy, before we get out of here. Uh, Billy, where can I find documentation on when Jesus went to Egypt to learn magic? You can look in the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. It's a very little known gospel that's available. You can find, I think I bought one for like $800 on Amazon one time. Because mm -hmm. it's out of publication, so people put old copies up there. I, I, I got one that was in excellent condition. That's why I paid the 800 mm -hmm. You can also download PDFs of it online. I'm not a big fan of PDFs online because I believe that PDFs online can be modified and changed. I yeah. found some that was missing, even some paragraphs before. <laughs> so I was like, wow. So I like to get the actual book in my hand. Uh, mm -hmm. But the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. Now, the trick to this is not the Gospel of the Holy Twelve with one, two, like 12. It's 12 spelled out, T-W-E-L-V-E, -E, right? 12, the Gospel of the Holy 12, because there's another one out called Gospel of the Holy 12, which is not it. And so that text will show you that from the age of 12 to 32, what happens to Jesus when he disappears from the biblical text? He ends up in Egypt. And we know he ends up in Egypt because at the in the Bible, in the New Testament, God calls, he says, I call my son out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Then he shows up riding on the back of the donkey into Jerusalem and, de and declares himself the Messiah, right? Mm -hmm. So we know that he was in Egypt for sure. And, of course, we have the Egyptians who know he was in Egypt. They even have the route that he traveled and stayed as him and his mother hid, hid from the Romans through several different places throughout the land. 
So it's a pretty incredible story, man. Pretty incredible story. The Dalai Lama has also confirmed. I did a video about this with Robert Grant that Jesus went to Tibet to learn Reiki healing and Qigong and healing with his hands. Mm -hmm. Then he went down into India to learn the mystic arts and all the way back down into Egypt. He was teaching reincarnation. And then from there, he's called back into uh, Jerusalem where he comes in on the back of the donkey. So it's a full, full circle, mm. right, full circle. And last question for the night, Billy, if this planet is this planet, a prison planet, and how do I escape off this planet without having to incarnate back into this planet? That's a good question. A lot of people believe that we're living on a prison planet, that we're, there's an energetic field that is keeping us incarnating, incarnating back here. The secret to escape in this field is in my book, Compendium of the Emerald Tablets, which is probably why it's been a number one bestseller on Amazon for four years. Um, I'm number one, Graham Hancock's number two. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I gotta say that sometime. <laughs> hey, hey. Graham Hancock's probably like, who is this Billy Carson? I can never get number one. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what's interesting is he talks about the Duat in here, right? The Duat. And I took the people to the ancient text where the Duat information came from in mm. some of the more, uh, I don't want to say newer comedic texts because all of it's ancient, but this is 38,000 years old. Yeah. And the um, uh, this newer text that talk about the Duat, that's probably like 3,000 years old. But the Duat text comes from uh, the Osirian behind the temple of Abydos, which is the temple of Seti in Abydos, right? And so there's this temple that's beneath it where the actual original text is located. And it's talking about, and Thoth also talks about the fact that when the spirit leaves the physical body, in order for it to get through to the next incarnation and not recycle back to the planet, it's got to go through something called the dua, which is like a portal, a spiritual portal. And I taught a whole um, workshop about this just a couple of weeks ago, the frequencies that you have to utter to the guards at the gates mm. and those frequencies allow you to pass through the gates. So um, it's, it's a frequency. So the only way to get through it's the secret of it is in my book, compendium of the Emerald tablets. Powerful, man. Hey, Billy, man. I want to thank you once again, man. I can't wait for blueprint for God power part two. Uh, any last thing you want to tell the people before we get out of here, my brother? I just say, look, man, it's going to be an amazing, amazing day. There's only a few days left to get your tickets. I know it's a sacrifice. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a sacrifice financially for a lot of people. We understand that. I never forget one lady who, who sent the message to us. She said, I canceled Netflix and I canceled Hulu so I, for two months so I can afford to pay for this ticket. Sometimes the thing you want to get in life depends on what your priorities are going to be, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and so you have to make certain things a priority. We can have anything we want if we make it a priority. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was growing up, a lot of my friends just say, man, you always got nice cars and you always got nice clothes and nice. This is when I got, you know, running my businesses when it's in high school and higher. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you always have money in your pocket? I'm like, well, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. I don't hang out. I don't go to the clubs. Right. <laughs> and year after year, now we're getting into our young age is like 20, 21, 23, 24, 25. They're still doing that stuff. And they're looking at me and I'm steady moving up. And they're asking me the same question. I said, you asked me that question five years ago. Mm. I said, how much money have you invested in the last five years since I saw you? How much did you invest? What do you mean invest? Like, How much money have you invested? Like, what are your priorities? So we can acquire things that we want. Mm. I sacrificed a lot of what we call, what people will call fun and excitement oh, yeah. Yeah. when yeah. I was younger. Yeah. Because I saw my own vision where I wanted to be. I made a sacrifice for that. I sacrificed school, high school prom. I didn't go to grad night. I didn't go to my own graduation. Right? So those are sacrifices that I personally made. I got to go to the Facebook group and see the pictures and live through vicariously through those people. But why, guess what? Why, why, why you a lot of people living like I'm living right now. Why you didn't go to your graduation, Billy? I was working, man. I was grinding. I was, I was working. I had two, two companies. I was already living on my own. Yeah, I Damn. moved out when I was 16, and I had to take care of business, man. Wow. This dude missed his own graduation because he was working. Yep. And y'all wonder why he's in the position he's in now. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a conspiracy. He's not a government agent. The no. brother got a hell of a work ethic. Let me I tell you, ethic, brother, I'm brother a reminder. Amazing work ethic. So, yeah, man. So, wow, Billy. I mean, wow. This... I like I'm, I'm excited. I'm learning so much from you and Dr. B. Can't wait till Sunday. 
Shout out to everybody who um, purchased tickets already. Shout out to Lee Tees, who said, just got minds excited. Uh, with that being said, family, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. We got about 2,100 people in the room. Shout out to everybody for tuning in tonight. Hopefully, I can see you all Sunday at the Blueprint for God Power 2 workshop, part two. With that being said, thank you, Billy. Thank you, family. Signing out, Brother Rich. Peace. Peace. All right.